What's up, it's Gabe. I'm going to be talking about how societies constrain themselves and whether it correlates with the Enlightenment values or not. So, the three core values of the Enlightenment that I'm going to be referencing throughout this video are reasoning, skepticism, and individuality. So think for yourself, question everything, and be yourself slash take responsibility. It's pretty straightforward. Now let's get into some countries and figure out how well they line up with these values. We're going to start at China. China's really good at oppressing its people. So good that they made the social credit system. Using cameras, AIs, this system tracks people and judges them, changing their social credit, which can go either up or down, not sideways. If your social credit gets too low, you're barred from things like travel. If it gets higher, then you get better deals with banks. Now, it's all pretty nightmarish, but we're going to talk about one specific part of it. People don't have freedom of speech in China as they do in America. And talking about you know, stuff that never happened could get you in a lot of trouble, legally as well as with the social credit. The enlightenment values that this goes against are skepticism and reasoning because you're not allowed to talk about it, which means you'll never get a full truth and you have to settle with the fact that your government is lying to you. And since you can't question it, there isn't much you can do. Now, hiding history is bad because history acts as a reference point for what is good and is bad. Think of it like failing a project and then getting it back and figuring out why you did wrong. Don't fail me, by the way. Alright, let's flip it to Canada now. Back in 2018, there was an issue about the removal of a statue of a guy named Sir John A. Macdonald, who, in the process of unifying the country with a intercontinental railroad, threw a bunch of natives off their land and mistreated them until some other people came along to fix his issues. Now, I don't commemorate this, but at the time, everybody was doing this. This was around the time of the Manifest Destiny, and even other countries like Britain were doing this to expand their territories. In short though, the statue acts as a memorial to the people who were actually affected, and serves to be a historical example of why the government should be questioned, and why the government is not perfect. So in those previous two societies, the moral of the story is that they constrain themselves by rewriting history, which as I mentioned, is a kind of reference point that, if you rewrite it, puts too much trust into the government. People should know that the government isn't perfect, and really should know what's happened in the past as to not repeat it. Alright, for this last one, we're going to go back to home base. We're going to go to the best country in the entire United States, America. Let's get it. Recently in America, there's been an issue of freedom of speech on college campuses, which overall is pretty no bueno because, you know, unconstitutional, but um, that's not what I'm graded on, so we're going to talk about the enlightenment aspect of it. Debating was a huge part of the enlightenment, seeing as if you were able to actually defend what you were debating for, that's what truly made you enlightened. That's where all the big philosophers that you've probably all heard of have come from. They were able to defend what they said, and therefore were able to call themselves enlightened. Nowadays on college campuses, you can't fully express what you want to think because it could land you in a lot of trouble, and could also put your career if you're faculty, or your college education if you're a student, at serious risk as well. This goes against really all three of them because you can't be who you want to be because you can't say what you want to say. And since you can't say what you want to say, therefore you can't reason it out with other people and come to a more refined conclusion. Lastly, not being able to question what systems are in place leads to the implication that the system is already perfect and does not need fine tuning, which it probably does. So, the final conclusions. The two enlightenment values that were inhibited the most were reasoning and skepticism. The inhibition was done generally by rewriting history and eliminating one's ability to express himself. Rewriting history sucks because you're putting too much trust into the government, you're removing a reference point for the future, you're hiding distinct evidence that the government is imperfect, and finally you're disrespecting the people that the history pertains to. Limiting the ability to express oneself stops people from being able to get a fuller truth, takes less into account, and doesn't allow the truth to be kept. Overall, I chose examples that were against the alignment values that I set up in the beginning because I wanted to compare how societies were restrained in different lights. We've seen how societies all across the world have resisted enlightenment values through different lenses but in the same way. That kind of begs the question though, are the enlightenment values perfect? <laughs>